Mm -hmm. Hi, with Julian on the brown note and a review of the menu, sort of rounding out last year's film still, which I'll be doing for months. Uh, from Mark Mylord from the UK. Slightly odd uh, filmography here. Ali G in the house in 2002. Um, don't know the other films. There's only been two, but the menu is the latest. But um, a pretty high level TV career here. Uh, Game of Thrones from 2015 to 2017, followed by Succession which has uh, been monumentally well received. This time coming back with a film that has become incredibly topical. It's set on an island where one of the world's best restaurants, Ralph Fiennes, is the guy that actually um, runs the restaurant. He is the embodiment of the best chef in the world. We all know who it is, uh, or one of them anyway. Uh, so he's having a night on his island with his incredible restaurant and he's got a group of people coming to the island and what ensues is a black class ridden horror comedy very similar to Glass Onion now Anya Taylor-Joy is like obviously the it actress at the moment she is everywhere from The Northman my second favourite film of the year and the year before that, last night in Soho, my sec again, my second favourite film of the year, that year. Um, it's those two are the main people in it. Nicholas Holt certainly has a, has a, a, a pretty big role in the film. So basically what happens is An Anya, who I called Anna, uh, sorry, Anya Taylor-Joy, who I called An Anna for years, uh, and Nicholas Holt <coughs> are going to this island and... They arrive at the um, boat terminal and the other people boarding are either filthy rich influencers or people that went to Beyonce's Dubai concert. And they're all insufferable. And and that's where I had a, uh, an initial problem with this film. The people are so insufferable and so awful, as all influencers and their kind are, that I thought, oh no, this is going to be a really tough watch because they're doing a really good... Nicholas Holt's character is awful. He's horrible. <clears throat> to spend time with like uh the reason that this is such an interesting take on uh morality and class is that it focuses squarely on foodies and i'm a foodie and i watch uh food and travel shows uh so it was really interesting having those people in the crosshairs um there is an idea that the end of uh any particular empire is signified by us elevating the chef to the status of celebrity so they say you know after towards the end of the roman empire or whatever we start celebrating people that we shouldn't uh which we clearly are um so they all turn up to this meal everyone's kissing uh, ralph fine's backside uh it's in this beautiful waterfront location and there seems to be a political edge to the degustation menu that's being served uh, which kicks off the intrigue when he serves a bread round and the round he mentions about how bread is you know the staff of life where what poor people create to survive you aren't creators therefore you don't get any bread he sends out a load of dips with no bread and most of the room eats it and says how wonderful it is there are a lot of obvious gags at the expense of foodies, but that doesn't mean they're not valid. Uh, and Anya is the only one that kicks up. We later find out, well, I won't go into what her background is, but she is a date. She's a replacement for Nicholas Holt's true date, who dumped him. <clears throat> Something that didn't need to be explained by the movie. It's fairly obvious. But he was supposed to go with his girlfriend. She dumped him, so he goes with Anya. She isn't a foodie. She thinks it's all pretentious twaddle and she stands out. Ralph Fiennes pulls her aside at one point and says, you're not supposed to be here. Why are you here? And who are you? And he is trying to gauge what kind of person she is because of what's coming throughout the course of the meal. The people are tech bros, food writers, B-list celebrities, and very very wealthy people 
and they're all insufferable. And what's coming is a very black horror. Um, <clears throat> for me, this is a slightly superior version of Glass Onion. Glass Onion and this have a number of similarities. A group of insufferable, rich, famous types all alighting for a soiree on a remote island owned by a mega rich person and murder and chaos ensuing. Um, I like this slightly more. I thought the characters were a little bit more, a little bit less generic. And even though foodie culture is something that you would easily critique uh, and the worship ever since El Bully in the early 2000s and the Fat Duck, the worship of these people who have the best restaurant in the world has been, you know, reached obscene heights. But here it is balanced by actually targeting the people that go to the restaurants rather than the people that make that food. Uh, there's a famous, or will be famous, cheeseburger sequence in this film. <clears throat> Some of that stuff can be a bit trite, but it's still true. The idea of, you know, this very deconstructed food, uh, losing sight of what food is. And also the idea of, you know, the Ralph Fiennes character being this artist that's, you know, had his art devalued by the people that can afford to come to his restaurant, which again is trite but true. <coughs> um, so it, it leaves a lot of moral machinations for the viewer to weigh up on their own, you know, is, I mean, Ralph finds this portrayed in a pretty, pretty maniacal manner, but also one with uh, a certain amount of integrity when it comes to what he's doing, and his targets are not people that you're going to warm to massively. I thought this was great. I thought this was better than it has got uh, credit for. I think when anyone turns their blowtorch on people that are in some way connected with film reviewers, um, they end up trying to take it to you know, they'll like, don't look up. There is, and, and I think one of the people involved with don't look up is actually involved here. There is um, a naturalness on behalf of the reviewers of movies to uh, put the boot in a little bit. And they say it goes, you know, oh, it's, it's so good up until a certain point. Uh, I thought there were a couple of scenes where it over -egged it, like the Nicholas Holt cooking scene and the cheeseburger scene. But at the same time, they were kind of interesting scenes. I thought it was uh, agreeably quick. I thought that it was intriguing in its premise and it got into the nastiness fairly well. Anya's brilliant. Uh, she, she is fantastic. Uh, her character's very interesting, straddling the class divide. And Ralph Fiennes, a brilliant actor always. Uh, I don't think he's ever been not great. Uh, he's he's fantastic here as a, a pretty <coughs> dark force and it lets the viewer make up their own mind on where they stand I think uh, you would probably stand with the evil people here rather than the people that are blamelessly uh, suffering so I thought this was great and it's um it's it's in it's you know it's a, it's relatively low budget but the environs are are posh people's food in the highest echelons of food culture so it looks actually really luxurious and i love the way that the um i wish i knew her name i'm going to say hong chow but she is the um, maitre d and her sarcasm in dealing with these people is peerless the the whole it's a tortilla routine i was absolutely crying with laughter i thought that was ex exceptionally funny and there are some shock moments some big, really big wow punch moments. And I like the fact that, you know, any time a film like this doesn't let the intended victims off the hook uh, is all right by me. And Colin Stetson, I uh, featured uh, albums by Colin Stetson on my radio show. He's a saxophonist. He's worked with Bon Iver, Arcade Fire, uh, and lots and lots of really big sort of, I think the National as well, big sort of alt-rock bands, as well as doing more sort of avant-garde stuff himself. Um, great choice for doing the soundtrack. The soundstage is excellent in this as well. Um, so if you're a foodie, um, I love the fact that they denote sequentially each meal, including the ingredients, which uh, occasionally does have more hilarity 
but um, they take it seriously. I wonder who came up with the menu here. The reason that this has become so topical is um, a little restaurant in Denmark, which is the most important restaurant in the world since El Bulli and is ranked as the <coughs> world's best restaurant or has been for more years than any other in the last 15 years, uh, is closing. It's announced Rennie Red Zeppi has announced that the this year is the last year that Noma will be open. It costs about 600 euros to go, I believe, um, saying that there is no cost efficiency in doing fine dining. The end of fine dining is how it's being heralded. There is no one on earth that this movie is trying to portray more than him. The problem with fine dining is you need to be able to make very young people work for free for ridiculous hours and treat them like hell. Otherwise, they can't afford to do it. It just doesn't work. You can't have 20 people making one dish and pay them a living wage. We are in an era now where that can't be done anymore. The Michelin-starred restaurants of old used to treat their staff like dog shit. And the ethos behind working for somewhere like Noma and anywhere like it is you're going to work there for free or for nearly no money to have it on your resume to take somewhere else. So they're paying you by the impact it will have on your future career. Which is fair, in a way. It's not exploiting people like, you know, you're not going to go and work for your local McDonald's in the same way that you go and work for Noma. It's not the same thing. But that paradigm no longer exists, and he probably can see that in a year or two, he'll get raked through the coals and cancelled for exploiting his workers. Uh, anyway, that's an aside. I thought this was really, really good. Um, I, it was, it, in a way, it was a little bit slight and at times a bit obvious. But like I said, I actually thought it had less flaws than Glass Onion. Um, and they both ended in a magnificent explosion as well. So I thought Menu was a very, very good film, particularly if you like anything dark. Anya is a, is a joy. And so is Ralph Fiennes, and it's really their film. Nicholas Holt creates a monstrous character, and he's not the only one in it. Uh, it's got some good shot moments, and I thought it, it, it played its hand well. It's pretty quick. It's uh, 106 minutes, but it, it goes by a clip. So I thought uh, the menu was very good. I'm going to give it 8.5 out of 10.